Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop. I think I think today is going to be the day when the truth is revealed about this amp. So uh, yesterday I was in my shop for a couple hours. I didn't post any video because most of it was just more uh, kind of running around in circles, but it ended with a number of important observations. That's where I'm going to start today with some important observations. And the first one are your socks on. Uh, they may come off when you see this I don't know this is a quite a surprise to me um, I was trying to receive the RF signals which I imagine are being issued out of this amplifier when it's operating I tried to receive it on a couple of different radios including an SDR uh, a couple of you asked questions about why I was looking for it at such a high frequency up in the megahertz and stuff like that and and and, and the real answer is because why not go looking you never know what you're gonna find that, that's really what I was doing that was towards the end of a long shop session. I was quite worn out and uh, having found some evidence of some RF on the SDR and recognizing that the SDR itself has its own problems with um, ghostly receptions and stuff like that. I just set it all aside. But having gotten a couple of questions uh, about it, I thought that might be a good thing to do is pursue that into lower frequencies. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that right now. So. I'm going to flip over to my SDR radio, which I will do now. So there we are. And ju just to make sure it's clear what the frequency range you're looking at is, here's the AM band here. So at the bottom of the AM band is 530. 455, you know, the IF frequency is located in this area. And this receiver claims to receive all the way down to zero and below. So I don't really know what below zero would be. So we're looking at the entire spectrum here from right from very very low 10 10,000 is probably the really the lowest this would go 10,000 is an audible tone of course and all the way up to a couple megahertz um, what I didn't show you is how the antenna is arranged I'll show it to you next time I flip the camera back I'm gonna leave it like this the the antenna for the SDR is nothing more than a clip lead I coiled three or four times into a one-inch coil and clipped on the end of a piece of cable. Just laying on my bench, oh, I don't know, a couple inches, six inches from the uh, from the radio, from the uh, from the amplifier on the tube side. So I'm going to turn on this amplifier while you're watching this. You can hear, you'll hear it. Here we go. I hope this works because you know, Mr. Murphy, get out of my shop. Here we go. Okay, so the amp is warming up now. Just watch what happens on here. Now, the amp is running on restricted power. It took a long time to warm up. Did you notice that the two pops you heard, pop, pop, those, those pops that always happen when this amp starts up? When those pops happened, this oscillation started. It's off the screen now, so you can't see the start point. Pop, pop, and it's oscillating. Number two, there's two signals here. There's one at 500 and one at 455. Look, it's practically dead on 455. In fact, let me just check and see exactly what that frequency is. So in case you're lost here, this, is, this, this signal here is coming out of the amplifier and so is this one, 453. That's a really bad actor. That's right in the IF frequency of, of any radio, uh, well, almost any radio, including the AM radio that's in the receiver of this console. And this isn't terribly helpful either, and we saw in my other hunting around that there are um, uh, harmonics of these frequencies. Uh, as they're up here too, it's just that everything's so straight you can't see it. But let me, let me put the receiver onto full power. You'll see these frequencies change, and it'll identify where the harmonics are too, because you'll see them move. And there they are. So you can see a harmonic up around nine and uh, up around a million and it exactly double the frequency shown below. That might be an artifact of the SDR radio. I don't think it is though. I, th I think 
think that's a real McCoy. So if you want it to get more interesting, I'm going to stop at this point, change some cameras around and make this even more interesting because I think this is really interesting. Okay, so now you're seeing the same display, only it's on the screen with the receiver here. I'm going to start moving the antenna around and I'm going to show you something interesting about the relative strength of those two signals down at, well, they've drifted lower, haven't they? They're down to four just above 400 and uh, just maybe around 460 it looks like, something like that. So I'm going to grab the antenna, let me just re-aim my narrow view camera. There's, there's the antenna, just laying back here, voila. So I'm going to pull it away from the receiver, I'm, I'm, I'm standing back now quite a few feet. So that's just noise in my shop now. And I'm just going to walk up towards the receiver. There can be no doubt that this is coming from the from the receiver. Now I'm going to make it a little more interesting. There's two frequencies, right? So here's one channel. Here's the other channel. What's happening here is each of these channels is oscillating independently at its own frequency, very close together in the middle, of, I mean between 400 and 500 kilohertz. What this tells me is that whatever is causing the oscillation in here is a major hard factor. It's something really built into this amp at this point. Uh, it could be the yellow capacitors that I put in there. Uh, I don't think so offhand, but I'm not sure. Of course, I'm not sure at all. So we can sniff even a little closer with this coil. So off the plate of the output tubes is the strongest source of this signal, as you could imagine. It's what I've seen with the scope. It's what you could imagine to be the case. The output of the output tubes is where the power is in this amplifier, of course. If I just get this close to those wires, like this blue one right here, well, watch what happens. I'm just kind of touching it. See how much stronger that signal? It's actually right off the top of the SDR screen. I can go almost anywhere else in this radio and not get as strong a signal. I, mean, I did this for quite a while the other day. There's the other channel. Both channels are, um, are uh, oscillating independently and strongly. A built-in design problem. A result of aging. Uh, the result of me putting in these capacitors. By the way, uh, these capacitors are just a little out of view. So there's now six capacitors. There used to be four. Uh, I can't remember because I don't know what I posted in video and stuff like that. These capacitors here are just twisted in mechanically to provide a capacitive short circuit on the input. Now let's talk about the input. The situation gets stranger every day for me. So I'll just leave the SDR on the screen for now. When you look at the input here in this amp, and I'm sorry for all the messing around I've done in here. It's kind of messed it up a little bit. But these are the two incoming audio wires. They're coming from the, from the connector down yonder here. So they're ultimately coming from the receiver. A little hard to see in the camera maybe, but it's quite simple. The shield is connected right to this tab sticking out of the uh, cabinet. And same thing on the other side, of course. And then there is a resistor, this resistor, which goes across the input. That is one over there. Can you see the value of those two resistors? Blue something gray, it looks like. Those measure at 7 megohms. Each one of them, both of them, they're the same. 7 megohms. I won't do it, but if I flipped up the schematic, I could show you that on the schematic, those are 1.2 megohms. But there's 7 megohms in here. 7 is almost like an open wire to me. Why are they even here at 7 megohms? In fact, I've almost never encountered a 7 megohm resistor <laughs> in all this work I've done. Shouldn't it be one megohm? Isn't that doesn't that make a lot more sense? Like it shows on the schematic, 1.2 megohms. 
So that's what I thought. I thought, oh, they've made a mistake in this amp. The guy who built it slipped in the wrong, the wrong resistors here, and that's caused these uh, inputs to act more like antennas. In fact, the resistor itself could be acting like an antenna. Could be part of a whole oscillation problem. Now I do have those uh, temporary yellow capacitors uh, stuck in there to short out that resistor with the capacitor. Total effect of that, I'm not sure. But you, you would think, those are fairly large capacitors. Any oscillation at that point would be knocked out. And of course the oscillation is still screaming away lower in the radio, uh, in the amplifier. So the oscillation may be all taking place just with those output tubes. Not clear yet. But I have something else to show you now. And I gotta make another rearrangement in my video. And I'm gonna turn the app off because uh, I don't need the hum and I don't want the, the live hum. Okay, that was my uh, little mistake there. Whoops. With my mouse there. So I swept away an important part of the video, I think, right at that moment. Maybe you did see it. You can see the uh, frequency, the oscillating frequency, just drift off and fade out at the same time when you switch it off. Just further evidence that the oscillation is coming out of the amp. There's, there's no question of that. No, never been. So I'm going to change the camera arrangement here. Okay, so what we're looking at is a photograph of the same type of amplifier uh, someone else has worked on, and they've done a lot of work on this guy. And it gives us a chance to compare what's in this uh, worked on amplifier uh, versus the one that I've got. And uh, first thing, just a couple things stand out right away. It looks like the fellow took the time to replace every last resistor in here. Yeah, it looks like every one of them got replaced. Um, so here's the ones I did. These are the 100 ohm ones here. He's, he's done those, of course. He's left these guys in. They're in on mine. Looks like all these resistors have been changed out that are neatly done on these uh, terminal strips at, at the factory. Not so neatly done when they're redone, of course. And this is what would this would worry me if I were to do this. So I think it would look pretty similar when I got done. And that all this stuff might even make the situation worse. Now he's also changed those disk capacitors, but look, he's used this style of capacitor, you know. Now, I have a few of these. I don't know if they're the right size or not. These are 0.22J. I thought these were 0.05s, aren't they? These are 503s. Well, what's he done here? So he's done something here. The thing is, the type of capacitor, this flat style of capacitor, maybe it's not... I'm sure it's a rolled capacitor like the round ones. He's got them tucked down close to the uh, chassis. It looks like he's made... It looks like he's put some effort in to get them down against the chassis. Now those disc ones, the original ones, were sitting up way up high. Like a receiving antenna. So that's what he's done. Of course these leads have all gotten a lot longer now. I've tucked mine in really... I put them in with the least amount of lead right from post to terminal to terminals, the technique I use, but that's raised them off the chassis a little bit. Now he's done something else here. He, he's put capacitors here, and I'm pretty sure these are probably, pretty sure probably these are cathode resistors, and he's bypassed them. I have to look at that a little closer, what, what he's doing. He's done something here. Now, the feedback line in, in he's, he's changed more capacitors over here. I haven't done all the capacitors. It looks like he's cut, there's the terminals. He's cut away the terminals and he's done his best to just wire these guys in. It looks like maybe he put a terminal strip in there. You know, and I think that's what he's done. He, he's removed the large yellow capacitors that are sitting here and inserted a terminal strip. No, you know what? That is the original terminal strip. The big yellow capacitors are right in this area. So he, he's managed to get them on the terminal strip. I'll take a look and see if I can do the same sort of thing here. I probably want to get rid of those big yellow ones, but the big, so th these are the replacements for the big yellow ones down here, I'm pretty sure. And he's used ordinary polarized capacitors. And the yellow capacitors are pr pretty sure those are non-polarized capacitors. So I'm not sure this is really the best arrangement he's got down here. I'm not sure, not sure. 
left channel or right channel he's written on here. Here's another capacitor he's stuck in back here. Probably just another place to sneak one in and, and get it in rigidly. But I think the most interesting thing is let's go look at those 7 mega ohm resistors. And there they are. A 7 mega ohm resistor. That's exactly what's in my set. He's left them alone. He, he hasn't changed them. He's, he's mounted terminals on this amp. He's made this amp uh, usable for general purposes um, rather than have it just work with the uh, with the receiver it's intended for. So he's, 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 that's what he's done here. So he's replaced the lead wires with these terminals. He hasn't done anything to do anything about the front end of the, like the grid is right here. It's right, it's right here. So, uh, so that's what he's done. Um, Admiral J104X, I'm pretty sure that's what that would say. That's about what we can get out of this photograph here. So what's the story on doing these? I think he did these, I read, he did this to improve the tonal quality of the amplifier. I'm far from being concerned about that yet. Too bad we can't see the rest of it, but I can, I can imagine the rest of it, we can imagine what's in the rest of it. Now has he done the wiring too? So, I see these two wires here that are coming to this terminal are the two heater wires in, in mine they're twisted. Um, are they? They are. They are twisted, and here they are not twisted. Plus, in mine, they aren't all green. There's two colors, a green and a white, kind of a bluish green and a white. So I don't think he's changed all these, though. He could have. He, he could have done a whole job, just remove everything and reinstall from scratch. And, okay, that's the red wire there. Uh, while we're looking at this photograph, a number of you have suggested the problems with this amp are probably related to bad grounding. Here in this picture, you can see quite clearly uh, how this has been done, where the, the grounded post here on the terminal strip is soldered right onto the chassis. I, I looked on my amp. These are really well done. There, there's just no reason to have any doubt about them. They're, I, I, I've wiggled them. They're solid as a rock. They're well done. So I don't, I don't think that could be a problem. Another suggestion is cold solder joints somewhere in here. Well, of course that's possible, but I haven't taken it upon myself to re-solder re all these connections yet. So, um, so that's what we can extract out of here. Oh, by the way, the so having gotten rid of these capacitors, he's kind of she has to do something with the wiring that used to go to those capacitors, and part of the wiring is the feedback. So in my amp off these big yellow capacitors is a big yellow feedback wire it goes up here and another wire just travels right over to here so when we look at these two terminals we can see a yellow wire coming off it but it's going down here look it's right against the chassis that's like the first thing that went in when he rebuilt this comes down here and connects and likewise, the other, the other one's the same way. He's put it right down against the chassis. Now, in my amp, these yellow wires are flying high over top of everything pretty well. Okay, maybe high is too strong a word, but they're up over top of most, most, most everything. Of course, feedback, 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 a symbol, a, a signal. Um, now, there, there's phasing issues with feedback of various sorts, and depends upon how they're utilizing the feedback and the amplifier and all this kind of all this kind of stuff um, I think that's about it for this photograph I'm not, I'm not sure I can extract more from it great though at least you know it's fantastic just having one other amp to look at uh, and, and what, what what I do about these this guy didn't do anything about them seven seven mega ohms Wow. You know, with this connection like that, see, it depends what, what's going on here. If, if, if the purpose of this is just to hold the grid down to ground, it's going to have a hard time with 7 mega ohms. If the purpose of this is to build up a charge on the grid so it self biases, 7 mega ohms, it, wouldn't, it would take a long time to bleed off a charge from here. 
in the end this is going to be plugged into some other electronic device and the output impedance is probably around 50,000 ohms but once you plug the 50,000 ohms in here this guy doesn't really count for anything even if it was one mega ohm the end of these wires in the receiver itself are terminated with a capacitor right onto a plate circuit just what the impedance of the far end of these lead wires in my amp is I, I don't know how you could how, how you could state it exactly it's a fairly small capacitor so all in all I really don't know what's up with these resistors I'm really inclined to change them at least I was until I saw this amp so commonly these amps will go out into service and after they've built you know 400 of them and they've heard 400 times they oscillate they're going to make changes and the change will be reflected on updates to the schematic and stuff like that but there'll be unchanged schematic copies floating around after that and that's probably what I have I probably have the unchanged or do I have the changed schematic <laughs> what what was here first is the is the 7 a fix for the 1.2 that didn't work is the 1.2 a fix for the crazy 7 here you know experiment is gonna gonna show that I, I'm gonna have to it's easy to I just strap in a mega ohm across this these two guys and see what happens as for laying my capacitors down um, I that's a fair bit of work so I'm not gonna jump into that but I may have to try to reinstall these capacitors I have down closer to the chassis and that might help let's go see if we can figure out what is what the actual oscillatory oscillatory circuit is I think I think that would help if I could figure that out and what could the oscillatory circuit be well it's gotta it's gotta be a strong signal getting into a sensitive part and then passing through an amplification an amplifier so we, we know where the strong part is we know the strong part is in the output side of the circuit here it's so strong it's radiating enough signal to pick it up on my SDR a few feet away so this signal can be picked up everywhere and anywhere in here we know there's uh, the grid inputs into the tube are sensitive of course so they're picking up what's coming out wow there you go just around here we also know that even more sensitive is the grid up at the uh, preamp so if the signal can get all the way up here and then you got the whole thing oscillating even if the oscillating power is occurring just down here the same signals could be found elsewhere in here giving the impression that they are directly involved with the oscillating circuit when in fact they're just being affected by the oscillations and coming from the oscillating circuit so a couple ways to interfere with this and break the oscillating circuit well one obvious one is lift the lift these grid resistors I mean that's going to end it but that's not going to tell me where it was coming from and I, I since this has to be part of the circuit if I open this up and destroy that part I won't know the rest of it that that's so so the trick the trick would be to interfere or interrupt the weak part of the oscillating circuit that would be ahead if it's assuming the amplification is the output tube that means it's taking place on the grid so if I mess around with the grid I should be able to throw off the uh, but it would be make more sense to start messing around with this grid and I've already messed around with this grid I put this capacitor in and, and my, my intention here was I, I, I want to silence the inputs I had these things shorted out just to the chassis that's probably not a wise way thing to do because it's direct to a grid and the grid needs a little bit of bias and the bias will control the current flowing through the tube and that's gonna set up a operating parameter for this tube with the strange not strange the uh, the connection of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, 
a anode of one uh, one of the triodes to the grid of the other. You take these capacitors out of here, run the amp, see what happens. The same kind of oscillation will leave these capacitors out because these aren't these aren't natural. That would leave this open, but then I could I could strap in the 1.2 uh, resistors uh, across this one. Now you have to don't you have to remove it? Just go across it temporarily. I can even just do it very very temporarily. Let's see what happens to the oscillation down here if it's having any effect. But that's not all. There's more going on here. Oh, by the way, I've got, got the two resistors ready to go in. To go in, the two 1.2 ohms. Uh, the next thing is, another thing is, uh, it repeatedly discovered that whatever tube you plug into this socket runs cooler than the rest for reasons I can't fathom. I haven't found anything. Oh, but I did. I found that, and I didn't post this video, it's the last things I was doing. The plate voltage on this tube was a little higher it was like 330 while it's 310 on the rest of the plates including this one 330 310 310 310 why 330 no plate current flowing no plate current flowing cooler too kind of all added up i then moved the tube from here cuz cuz i i just i just doubt myself at every turn i flipped the tubes Turn the unit on, measure the voltage. It was high here now, and normal everywhere else. It's following the tube. I then did a temperature check using my thermal viewer. This tube was cooler, and that's where it ended. Because the only tube I had to replace it with was this one with the lipstick on it. Well, you see the lipstick is gone now. So I couldn't I couldn't complete that study. So I'm going to complete it uh, this morning. So we got all kinds of stuff here. We've got two channels oscillating at almost the same frequency, suggesting that, to me anyway, whatever it is that's going on is built into this thing at this point. Um, we got some funny business up here of various sorts to deal with. We've got the differential heating it appears to be tracking a particular tube now, but that's quite different from previous results. That's what we got. We got all that. Uh, let's start with the tube heating thing. Um, maybe what we'll do. I'll, I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of back up a little. and take these temporary capacitors out of here. Simplify the thing. You know what? And and then we're gonna run it. See what happens. Look on the SDR. After a couple of minutes, the tubes will be hot enough to test the heat in the tubes. We'll test the B plus across here, B plus across here. Now, one of the things I also realized is, you know, instruments affect your, uh, your affect can affect the circuits you're reading, of course. And there's there's a lot of that going on here. Um, the one that I didn't pay enough attention to is when I'm using this meter, I'm holding these leads, I'm charging these leads up with quite a hum uh, for me yes I hum and so as I take readings I'm injecting a powerful hum well maybe not powerful but a hum signal which in some cases is very significant and I'm just kind of ignoring it while I'm working away here shame on me for doing that that's not good another thing a number of you are pointing out is hey why not operate this amp from top to bottom uh, off video I have amp operated this amp I have put proper inputs to it I've done it with instruments and I've done it with uh, the receiver itself the amp appears to operate just fine, regardless of all the stuff that's going on. Except a bit of a hum. A hum! Yes, that's the last one. The hum. Okay, so why is this guy still humming when I boosted up his capacitance like this? And I think the answer is, it's because I overlooked something here. And that is the B plus supply for the two tubes up here. I, I made the bad assumption. I didn't even think hard about it. That the B plus supply for these guys would be the same as the B plus supply for these guys. Now that's not likely at all. I should have, I should have realized right away that's not likely, because generally the supply you 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 provide to output tubes 
uh, is strong for heavy current and power and often has a little bit of hum in it that won't matter in the end because it's not enough to be heard but you could see it on instr instruments and that as compared to other filtered B plus lines so if that's the case if a hummy thing is being sent here but it doesn't matter that same hummy thing can't be sent up onto the uh, preamp tubes they should have realized this or, or for sure they're going to be sensitive to it so the preamp tubes have their own B plus with their own filter capacitor which I've done nothing about so I've augmented two of them I'm going to augment the third capacitor wherever it is in here and, and we'll see if that doesn't knock out the rest of the hump. Ultimately, uh, as a couple of you have uh, noted, it's probably better to remove the original capacitors completely from the circuit. That's probably where I'll end up uh, in the end. I'll just clip them free and we'll just go with the ones I've installed. Oh my gosh. So first things first, the amplifier's off. So I'm just gonna undo these capacitors here just kind of mechanically twist it in there I guess next time I put out a capacitor order I'll have to buy some uh, a set of, a better set a set of larger ceramics maybe now the fellow that did that to his amp that we were looking at the photo a piece of copper just went flying I think I want to grab that Maybe his amp was howling away, he didn't even know it. Who knows? Come on. Don't, don't, don't fool around. frustration go up already now. I've got some uh, old shorting wire tails hanging around here. I'm going to clean them up. tiny piece. It's a big piece. There we go. Okay. Start them up. Start them up. Start them up. What, what's, what's going on? I got, I got some feeling that I'm not thinking of something just now. Don't like those feelings. Okay, the bulbs. Now I haven't looked on the scope to make sure this this is os oscillating. So those are the open circuited outputs now, or inputs that you hear that kind of hum. So another thing I didn't talk about yet, I'm going to talk about it now, is the grid potential, the bias potential on these two input terminals to the tubes here. This is the triode grid of the input. Watch my meter here. This is a bit of a bogus reading. Let's see what we get. On this side, this might make a pop. Big hum, right? big hum so bearing in mind that when I put my voltmeter on there I am also injecting a, loud, a, a, sign, a significant signal minus it's good minus what again 1.1 now what about the other side okay so as usual <laughs> you get the same result as 
I did before. So before, <laughs> I was getting pretty consistently minus 2 on this channel and plus 0.3 on this one. Not anymore today though. So we won't worry about that. Just add it, just, just, just the mystery, the mystery, the mystery, the mystery of it. Now we're going to check the temperature of those tubes. Try to get this on camera clearly. So to do that, I'm going to tip down the amplifier here. Can I, can I do that? Can I do that? Is it operating? They don't like to do this for things that are operating. Stuff happens and you drop them. <laughs> like any big pop would come out of it. Now, just looking at the glow level of these tubes here. You just lower the glow level in the room a little bit. So just, just looking at this, <laughs> this is a totally bogus thing to do, I think, anyway. I'd say the three tubes on the left are similar and the one on the right is not like the other three. So I'm talking about this tube here, the one that's flashing out from my finger. It just doesn't look as hot. It just doesn't look as hot. But don't be fooled. Before I say any more, because I'll be fooled. Hey, what's with the focus here? Come on, camera. Now, I've got this strange problem again where I cannot show this on camera easily. Okay, looking on my own. I have to look on my own. All three of these look to be the same temperature. All four of them, rather. <laughs> three of them. I see no, I see, yeah, I don't see any difference here at all. Now, sometimes I've been operating this amp for an extended period. It'd be a popping sound. A stronger hum will come out of it. Um, and usually, and then I can hear tube heating effects of either a tube heating up or cooling down it sounds like cooling down to me just the nature of the clicky sound that comes out of it and I do the temperature test and the last time I did this it was this position here but every other time I've done it it's this position now something just started singing in here it just stopped again so I don't know, inconclusive is all I can say about this temperature testing of the tubes. Uh, inconclusive in the sense that it's inconsistent. I shouldn't, that's why. Inconsistent results, can't make any conclusion from it. Other than right now, everything's normal. Everything is normal. So what to do about those one, about the uh, input resistors? Verify that this is still oscillating. Grab my coil. Okay, you know, we're going to sniff around the, the tubes themselves too. Let me put that back up on the screen here. I think I can do it while you're watching. I think I can. If we put that back up. We would do that. Sorry about doing this like this, like that, and then like that. There we are. Hey, where'd that squealy sound just come from? Well, the oscillations are way higher. So I took those, those uh, grounding capacitors out, but the oscillations are still there. Clearly coming from uh, two different frequencies from each channel. On the other side of the tube here. Something is squealing away.
really screaming through these output transformers, of course. I can't be surprised about that. So another suggestion was, I've got the wrong uh, impedance of speakers hooked up to the amp, and this is part of why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, suggestion was, uh, maybe I've got, well, I don't know, too much or too little. These are 8 ohm speakers plugged into the terminals on the amp that are designed for the entire signal to be provided to the speakers. It's, it's, not, it's not the trouble output or the bass output, it's just the the all of it output. Um, the easiest way to fool with that is to unplug the speakers and see what happens with the oscillation. Uh, if you're running the amp with no load on the output transformers, probably a brief period might be okay like that. Best way to do this, I think, is to set it up, switch it off, pull the speakers out. to do this. Why don't we put this just in some spot where it's going to stay. Maybe anywhere really. Okay, now I just have to pull one speaker out briefly and see what happens there. Well, not, no, it's gone up. Where? It's right up there. It's right up in the radio band now, isn't it? Uh, 600, it's like 540, you know, five, five seventy, and six, ten or so. Okay, out with one speaker. Gosh, look at that! Look at that! What happened there? It's gone. Okay, so the S. There you. Hey, this is interesting. Now. How do you like that? How do you like that? I like that. I like that a lot. Let's try the other one. Well, hum free this thing is with this channel. That's interesting too. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How, how, how can this be? So both channels have open inputs, but only one of them you can hear the open input. The other one, right this channel, nothing. Did I see sparks fly there? Oh my gosh, there's sparks here. How can this be? I don't know if this is going to come on camera here. But this is just going to a speaker. Well, it's probably all over the sound of the video. Let me put my headphones on here. You're probably hearing all that. You're not seeing the sparks, but... See it? There's a little tiny spark in there. Okay, enough of that. No, you don't. I don't think I got it on camera, but I saw one for sure. And it looked like one of those sparkly sparks, uh, like uh, voltage with no current behind it. Okay. We gotta do something with the speaker impedance here. Be good to find out what it's supposed to be. So man, I'll go out, I'll examine the console, I'll look at the way the speakers are wired out there. Man, no, don't have to, it's on the schematic. It appears on the schematic. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, here's the schematic, uh, here's the speakers, they show up over here. Now, what have they done? Does it, does it give any, any impedance statement here anywhere? I don't see it anywhere. So we have the base going into the base, and the other two speakers going in here. These guys are in parallel. This guy's all by himself. If I just go out and look at the, well, I'll go out and look at those. Yeah, I gotta go look at them and see what they've done. Look, look at the speaker. Maybe it says right on the speaker, but my guess is these are all eight ohms. So you'd have, what would you have then? You'd have eight. If these are eight, these become four, sort of, four. You're getting down around three or two. You're getting down. It's going down. It's not like they added these in in series. So maybe the output impedance that I've hooked up, the eight ohms, is too high. Hmm. Hmm. 
By the way, th these are the jacks I'm, I've got my speakers in. These ones here, the extension jacks. They just bypass all of the filtering here, the crossover filtering. Well, what if I plug these speakers into one of these other jacks? I get out of those spat jacks. Well, that's an even easier test. Let's give that a try. Okay, the speakers into other jacks. Um, what's the best way of doing this? So first of all, we can see the oscillation on the SDR. You just pull one speaker out and stick it in. I don't know if it's treble or bass. There we go. One speaker out into the treble. Or, 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 or bass, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I think this is the bass. Oscillation gone. Go over one. This would be the bass. Uh -huh. This is interesting. Okay, so other speaker out. Into what I think is the treble. I, I don't know if it's working offhand. I, I've got... I, I imagine it's working as well. But anyway, the oscillation's gone. Out of the what I think is the trouble into the base it's back again the woofer so if we take this on the outside oh my gosh I can't believe it this is, so the, the actual oscillating circuit involves the speakers themselves oh my gosh so the speaker wires I've got are, are just just everyday wires. I wonder if it's all shielded out in the uh, amplifier. Okay, that's enough reason to go out and take, take a look in my garage and uh, let's see what's going on with that. Okay, so I went out and looked at the uh, uh, console here. I'm just going to show you the pictures right on my phone because I'm too lazy to do anything else. So uh, nothing special going on. This is the mid-range speaker here. You can see the, a little bit of the capacitor there. There's a better shot of the tweeter, mid-range, and capacitor. Look at these speakers are fully enclosed on the back. Oh, it's hard to see in the photo, but there's, there's, they're fully enclosed on the back. I've never seen that before. And there's. Unfortunately, the photo's not coming across on the uh, video very good at all, but there's a big capacitor sitting right there, of course. Whoop, whoop. There's a shot there. There's nothing unusual going on in these speakers. I did manage to get some numbers off them, but I'm afraid the numbers are just the uh, manufacturer's serial numbers for the speaker itself. Here's the woofer. There's the woofer connected to its wires. And the only kind of number I can find is... 78M31-2. You can't see it. You can't see it in this the way I'm looking at it here. Anyway, so that's it. So nothing. So certainly no shielded cables. Nothing special going on. Everything is just as you would imagine it to be when it comes to the speakers. But we don't know the impedance of those speakers. I know where they were plugged in. They were not plugged into the general service output. They are plugged into the, the high and low outputs on the on the amp. Similar to the way I've got this speaker plugged in now. So I mean there's a really good chance. You just plug this back into its regular speakers and this whole oscillation thing is over and done with. But the whole thing has been nothing more than an artifact of what I've done here in my shop. And try as I may, I'm never gonna solve it. If I do solve it, I've really solved a problem that doesn't exist. Oh my gosh. That's kind of where I'm at on this now. The only way to know this for sure is to put this guy into the cabinet and run him with his own speakers and somehow try to detect that oscillation. If it still exists. I'm almost certain it would. That would be a great thing. That would leave me with just a hump. So let's do this. I'm going to assume I've solved the problem here. I know what it is. It's the speakers I'm using here in my shop that are really causing the oscillation. Not really the speakers themselves, but the fact that I'm using them. 
I'm gonna go after that hum by augmenting. You know what? I may finish off the power supply at this point. Why not do that? I'll, I'll remake the power supply uh, the way it needs to be. And that'll be done, and the hum will be gone. The oscillations won't matter. And I've ended up learning a heck of a lot here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so I've installed the extra filter capacitor way up here. After installing it, I'm thinking, wow, I've done this close to all these audio circuits. But hopefully that won't matter. Let's just double check. The negative side is onto this grounded terminal. Yep, and the positive side is onto where the red wire is coming from the power supply. Excellent. Will this guy hum? Now the thing about this is, from time to time, this amp has not hummed at all. I don't really know why. It could be uh, during various tests, I'm kind of occluding the output from the amp so you can't hear the hum anymore. I don't know. Sometimes it seems to be humming in one channel and not humming in the other. How can that be with a power supply hum? Let's see what happens. Let, not with the mouse, though. <laughs> I keep trying to turn stuff on with the mouse. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on a couple things. Let's see, I've got the scope running. And dim bulbs first. In case I boomed up big time with that capacitor. Nope, everything looks good. Just let it warm up. Just watching those bulbs, dim bulbs. Okay, here they come. Here's the amp. Well, it has input hum. I have to put those capacitors back in. Uh, huh, son of a gun. So we can't be sure about the hum without those capacitors in there, or... Well, that's what I gotta do. Let, let's look for the oscillation, though. This is what I wanted to, to check for. Now, you see that the speakers are plugged in, not, they're not plugged into the general output ones where they were all this time. They are in the, which ones are they in? They're actually in the base connection. This is where the base speakers go. Okay, man, here comes the proof. Are you oscillating? No. No oscillation. Now, if you're looking at the scope in the camera, you're only seeing half the line. It's a shutter effect again of the camera. Let me put this on full. That might change things a little bit on the camera too. No, I know what will. There. Okay, now you can see the whole line. So here we go. Is there an oscillation on the plates? this channel. There's a hum. There's a hum there. The other channel, plate, same hum, and of course same thing there, but no oscillation. Only because I moved the speaker plugs. So I'm going to have to re reinstall the shorting capacitors up here before we know for sure that uh, there's uh, that, that there's no hum left in it. I, I think it is humming. Here I am trying to work stuff again with the mouse. Okay, I'll put in those capacitors. We'll see what happens. Kill the inputs. 